it's here. It's what we've been waiting for. Hey, Cadillac fans, this is Mr. Bob here with Josh, and we have a really exciting day today. What we're going to do is show you what we're going to need to do to hook up the transmission, the details of the transmission, so we can put the engine into the frame and have it mounted up. So we're back here at the bench. We've got our transmission here. Our new, beautiful transmission. Brand new transmission. What it is, this is a Turbo 400 transmission. This is a GM heavy duty transmission that was used for years. And Cadillacs, they actually started using them in 1964. Before they had that, the first Cadillac automatic transmission came out right before World War II in the early 40s. Made a good name for itself in the war too, and tanks and other equipment. Oh yeah, it was called it was called the Hydromatic. One of the retrofits we're doing on the 59 is we're using the later style transmission. So we're ditching the big heavy Hydromatic and using a 400 turbo hydro. Mm -hmm. And this has been completely rebuilt. And in order to do that, we have to use an adapter plate. And so we have this adapter plate right here. It's a beautiful aluminum Milled piece. aluminum piece. And what that will do is that will make in between the transmission and the engine block and allow us to use the more modern transmission. And I've went ahead and installed the studs in it already and because it's aluminum, use some anti-seize compound on them so they don't give trouble. So this is the transmission side and then this is the engine side. The starter will mount here along the engine block. Um, it's bolted to the engine block with um, these uh, cap uh, Allen head screws so that they're recessed which is important to provide a flat surface for the transmission. But we'll show you all the details of the hardware but the, uh, as, as we install. So what have you got over on your side of the bench, Bob? All right, what we have, we have all of, we just get a little, little pre-painting here. We have all of our fasteners. And then we also have these. These are great, and you'll see that we also put anti-seize on it. Yep. And what's important for that is, in addition to that aluminum plate, there also is, the kit comes with a flywheel. And this right here adapts to go in the back, on the flywheel, in the back of the crankshaft. So this bolts onto there, and then that allows us to bolt the torque converter to the flywheel with this inside, which then mates to the back of the crankshaft. Looking at the surface of the adapter plate, this is where the surface where the transmission will mate. Don't measure down into this milled where section. Where that's machined. You want to measure the transmission mounting surface. Mm -hmm. You have a nice area right here mm -hmm. and here where you can slide your rule in. Should be between three quarters and seven eighths, Bob. We're on the money. Cool. Oh yeah, perfect. So here we have the uh, starter that we're going to be using on this project. And so it simply is going to uh, slip in here from the engine side. And Bob's got one bolt, and I've got the other. Once again, this plate is aluminum, it is tough. I believe it's made out of 6061 yeah. P6. And you just always want to be careful when you are screwing any sort of fast steel fastener, dissimilar metals into aluminum. You don't have to muscle it, 
get it good and tight in the proper torque specifications. Once again, like I discussed earlier, with this kit, it is using a Chrysler starter. So I just snug those up. I've got here is my battery charger. All I'm going to do is not connect power to the main terminal. I'm just going to hit the solenoid uh, start terminal. So that'll cause the, the Bendix to drive out so we can check to make sure it's engaging into the, into the flywheel. We're looking good. We got good clearance. It's almost all the way. Yeah. We got good mesh of the teeth. Yep. Yep. It's going okay. and hitting in there. So you want to make sure sometimes you, you might see it when you try to adapt something. Who knows? That might not come all the way into the teeth, only catch it in eighth. And all you're going to do is cause damage. And the lower hole here is larger on the starter than the bolt. So that you can rock the starter a little bit to fine tune the engagement. Back here on the bench, back to our transmission. With the housing on here, we did run into one thing that we had to modify. And go ahead, Josh, show what you had to do right there. Well, we had to take in on this side of the transmission case. It flared out similar to this side. And I had to take and cut off an area here to clear the oil filter. If you have a 59 or older block, it won't be a problem. But it was, um, it was hitting on the, on the oil filter housing on the block. So I came in about where the screw hole for the cover plate normally went. And I just cut straight down the side. And then I took the cover plate and it, the, both sides were like this. And now this, is, this hole is missing where it mounts. So I bent the tab up and drilled and tapped a hole in the side of the housing. So now this all fits nice and lines up and looks really good. So that's one little modification that you might have to work out depending on what engine you're using. So GM style torque converters go on here. First, we like to take and put a little bit of fluid in there. That way it's the first turns not going dry. Let's put a little just standard automatic transmission fluid. About half that bottle, Bob, you think? Yeah, let's do about half that to start. Okay. What we're gonna do next, well, first let's go ahead, let's put a little ATF on there, it's always good. So just like splines. anything when you look at when we were building the engine, I'd like to put a little more. This is all this is just gonna be our friend. And I guess a little bit around the ceiling surface and maybe a little bit there on the pump drive. So there is a shaft on the end of the torque converter. There's two milled slots, and what that is is that drives the pump inside the transmission. So this is a mistake that I've seen happen to people. So let's go ahead and lift this up. We're gonna slide it on the shaft. It feels, it'll go right there on the splines of the shaft. You're gonna feel it's gonna stop. And you think you're all the way, but you're, but not. you're not. You wanna take it and turn it. Might be not on the center spline. There we go. There we go and you'll feel it go that last little snap in. So if you put it in, right you there. feel it stop, boom. Yep. Turn it with pressure until you feel that last. So there'll usually be a stop, mm -hmm. turn, 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 bang. Yeah, you could feel it. Very important. Yeah, you have the two, two spline shafts plus the, the oil pump drive. So there's multiple things to line up. But the good thing is, what is it, it's supposed to sit the mounting bosses here is supposed to sit an inch back from the face. Exactly one inch. So it's very easy to check to know that you've got it right. So just against the face of the surface where you have your three mounting holes, you take a straight edge, you go across the face. Rotate this around and kind of hard for the camera to see, but uh, I'm seeing one inch. One inch, great. Okay, now that we've got the uh, transmission mounted to the adapter plate in the engine, we need to, the final step is to put in the um, uh, bolts between the uh, flywheel and the torque converter. So I've got those, and I've already got one installed just so that you didn't have to see us fiddling with it because it is kind of, you have to jockey everything into position to get the first bolt in. So I'm going to go ahead and put the other two bolts in. 
with uh, grade eight bolts with locking nuts. Daddy Daddy Presents, it's all about giving back. Please enjoy the video of the Boys and Girls Clubs of St. Helena and Calistoga. Donate by clicking the link in the video description.